Hello and welcome back to my studio. Well, in this demonstration we're painting boats, water and interesting light. This is a long demonstration, so I hope you enjoy it. Get some tips for your next painting. Let's have a look. Okay, now this is one of those photographs that has been manipulated a bit by the photographer. Maybe you find a something like this on a stock photo and you want to paint it. Well, I'm going to use the unusual color as inspiration. Give me a little bit of color harmony throughout the painting. Most of all though, this is a lesson about how to simplify a complex scene like this. Give it your own twist and just get something that uh, speaks about the overall impression of the scene. That's what we're trying to create, an impression. We don't want to get all the details, there's just way too many. I'm also painting on quite a small painting surface. It's basically an A5 and I'm using oils and relatively large brushes for such a detailed scene in a small space. So what we're going to end up with is a lively sketch that hopefully has some attractive color as well. Have a look at how I go about this. If you're interested in painting the same scene, I'm going to provide the reference photo in my painting school. And there's a link in the description where you can find this for yourself, all free. You can join in and try it out for yourself. All right, let's begin. This is the reference with the filter coloring, which I'm going to try to apply in the painting. And the colors, I'm using oils. I'm just using actually a little bit of zested toxic free uh, brush cleaner as well, just to help me keep my brushes clean. Mostly using long flats and full bits in number six, but there's a rigger brush there as well for a few little shapes. So start off with a tone. The, the photograph has that sort of pinkish tone. I'm going to apply a bit of that to the painting. It may influence the painting to a larger or lesser degree. A lot depends on how I decide to take the, the whole process. Yeah, I'm just wiping off a little bit of the, the lights in the sky and also in the water. So I'm already getting a composition worked out. The rest is still a little wet, so I'm just going to dab it with the tissue paper. Pick up a little bit of the extra wet medium there. And now for the, the rest, I don't use any mediums right from this point on. Quick sketch, taking a little bit more time with the, the sketch, a little more detail because it is quite a detailed scene. So I'm getting placement of shapes and proportions. I wouldn't say 100% accurate, of course, but getting a good start to that. And then I will go into it with the painting in a loose fashion. I don't want a tight painting. I don't want details. I basically, I want a lot of abstract or kind of abstract shapes. You'll see as I go, I'm sure. It will still be a series of buildings. There'll still be boats, etc. But suggestion of perhaps people walking around, lights and color on the, the dark side, little things like that, all going to be very much suggested. As I said in the beginning, this is an exercise in simplification and how you simplify a painting. At the sky, with hindsight, the sky is taking up a little too much space. I may even just crop this if I had to put this into a frame. I'd crop the sky perhaps an inch off the top there. But you work with what you're given, so I'm sticking more or less to the reference and just making a warm sky. I'm not trying to copy that filter that the cameraman has used for the photograph. 
Now the size of the building a bit cooler, just a bit of burnt sienna, alizarin and ultramarine blue. I've swapped out a brush here for a smaller long flat. And I say smaller, it's just a different brand and uh, it's number six is a bit narrower but still long. Sometimes brush manufacturers do vary quite a bit as I'm sure you've discovered. But to working out okay with this painting because of the, the sort of squeeze of information all in one area. The shadows I'm hoping will link up the foreground and connect the foreground to the middle ground and just add a bit more balance to the scene. Windows very much just uh, starting off anyway with a, a dark shape, some ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'll add a few lights to that as we go. The roof pretty much a dark sort of um, abstract shape. Suggestion of the, the chimneys, nothing much else. There are some trees in the background. I'll soften those up a little later, just getting more or less the placement. This is still just the blocking in stage of the painting. So frequently my shapes may be a little bigger and I adjust them by cutting in with the background shape. Very important idea to take forward in your painting is sometimes you got to let the background shapes dictate what the foreground shapes are going to look like. These all sort of cool gray buildings. Um, so I'm, I'm creating grays from either violet and sometimes I'll put a little touch of yellow into the violet and then some white to really get a gray. But try to make sure it's either a warm or a cool gray. You're not creating a mud. It has to be a colorful gray at the very least communicating cool or warm. Just on the subject of grey, of course, you'll never see me creating a grey from black and white paint. Mostly because I simply don't have any black paint. So I create blacks, chromatic blacks, with mixing things like burnt sienna and ultramarine, or a deep green with alizarin crimson, um, and that usually will take care of any black colors you need. All right, a nice uh, touches of red, a bit of that red light coming into the painting. One of the boats and also a few objects on the dock side, umbrellas, and um, who knows, it doesn't really matter. If I see a color, that's all I'm looking for. And of course the shape. There's a peculiar boat in the middle, a sort of um, twin hull boat. So hopefully I can describe that in the painting without having too much trouble. For the rest, boat shapes are suggestions when you're working with a small scale like this. This is simply an A5 sheet of oil paper, oil painting paper. A few lights as well. Uh, maybe there's some lights in 
in a shop or shop windows here. I'm putting in some reflected light in the, the windows. Adding a nice little uh, repetition of the dockside lights as well. Warm colors, things like that. Over here though, all in shadow. Very, very simplified. All you need is to try and get a shape and uh, the, the color. The color has its own value, of course, so if it's light or dark, you'll adapt the color for that, but for the rest, just the shape will suggest what it is. I'm hoping the viewer can work out that these boats, or they are indeed boats, I think that's the minimum requirement. But more than that, I can't really promise anything. I don't know much about boats themselves. I just look for that shape. It's actually very difficult to make details out in the photograph. It's a lot of dark and shadow colors. But I enjoy that. I enjoy working with shadow areas that are a little bit more mysterious. Can you figure out what's going on there? As long as you can think of something um, that suggests something in your mind's eye, then that's good. You've achieved what you needed to do. Do these suggest figures standing on the, the wolf on the, on the side? Perhaps, hopefully. There's some sort of awning over there. I'll try to suggest that. A couple of little portals, windows on the, the boat. That makes it read a little more correctly. It's time to start working out these shadows carry some of the darks down into the foreground. Soft edges for the reflections. There's not much movement on the water, so remember, lights will appear darker. Edges always will be softer. Just try to get that roof shape a little more accurate. The hull of the boat, just a grey shape. Picking up some of the, the colours I see on the boat. There's quite a lot of light on the left-hand side. A lot more light though on the right. 
And I, I don't want that to be a weak part of the painting. So I'm a little concerned about that. The strength of the painting comes from the, the darks, the strong dark elements. Let's see if I can get a bit of that in, but there's already quite a lot of white paint creeping into the reflections where I'm working at the moment. Some of the sky coming through. I just need to try to subdue that. There's almost a greyish look to the, the foreground. The thing about reflections, once they suggest the, the situation, the, the objects being reflected, if you can start picking that out and it starts having a ring of truth about it, is it reading correctly then? That's enough. You've, you've done what you need to do. Here I'm just trying to get a little more zing into the, the scene. I guess I could leave it. But uh, I like to try things. May not work 100%, but if you think that a color or, or a shape will enhance the painting, then try it. You can always take it out later, scrape it off, paint over it. Now, uh, the rigor brush and to get a little bit more interest into the scene. A few small vertical shapes, perhaps people on the, the dark side. Some railings on the boats, a few antennas maybe. Just that sort of um, suggested details that brings in nice little vertical shapes and breaks things up or links up one shape to another. A nice little punch of red. I think it does help the painting. There's some of this broken light dark contrasts in the water, so I'll bring a little bit of that into the painting. Very much in the conclusion stages from at this point I'm I need to be aware that what I add must have a reason, it must take the painting further. If it doesn't then I should just stop. Always stand back, have a look at the painting uh, from a distance of about you know, seven feet or something like that and uh, see if it makes sense, if it's reading correctly, if it looks like you've got a, a good light effect. Then your painting is probably done. Not much else you can add to it. So I'm considering that. I'm going to just... Uh, bring in a little more of a dark shape here or there to create some contrast in the water. Mm -hmm. 
There are some drain pipes down the side of the building that may be just a way of bringing a little touch of light into the scene. Perhaps a little too strong. It could be a bit more of a blue-violet shape. If you do lines like this and they look a little bit too much, you could go over part of it, you could paint out some of it. You don't have to paint it all out. Let's get a few branch shapes in those distant trees. So the entire painting is a process of adding shapes, simplifying, getting something that perhaps has the essence of the scene. Overall I'm quite pleased with this. I'm going to sign it off at this point and uh, try it out for yourself. Quite a, an attractive little scene to play around with. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. It was fun to do. A little bit tricky, simplifying just how many little shapes you're going to put in and where you're going to put them. But overall, I think uh, I held back the temptation of getting more details into it. And the overall impression is what I'm after. I think it turned out quite nice. Now, as I said, if you want to try this painting out for yourself, I've got the reference photo in my free course. On my painting school you'll find a link in the description go along there try it out for yourself okay don't forget subscribe to this channel that way you won't miss videos like this coming up in the future and if you can share it with a friend get your friends to join in with your painting journey as well they'll keep you honest and painting frequently well until next time have a great painting weekend and cheers for now